Ben Shapiro has a few things of his own to share about the biggest celebrity scandal of this century. Oh no, another story of, of personal foibles in the rap world. I can't believe it because that is a, that is a world, I mean, being America's favorite ex-rapper, I can say this, that is a world that is filled with virtue and decency and people who truly believe in committed values. So I am personally shocked and appalled by the latest allegations against Sean Diddy Combs. I can't, I, I, frankly, I, I can't believe it. I just, I can't. I mean, paint me shocked. According to NBC News, Sean Diddy Combs is sued on Monday in federal court by a producer on his most recent album, who accuses the music mogul of sexually harassing, drugging, and threatening him over more than a year. The producer, Rodney Lil Rod Jones, says in the lawsuit he lived and traveled with Combs from September 2022 to November 2023, during which time he recorded hours of video and audio of Combs, his staff, and others engaging in serious illegal activity. Among the allegations that Combs forced Jones to procure sex workers and pressured him to engage in unwelcome sex acts with them and others, and that Combs gave laced alcoholic beverages to people who attended parties at his home. The lawsuit includes what it says are screenshots from gatherings hosted at Combs' home that included underage girls and sex workers, some of whom, he said, were provided drinks that had been laced with drugs at Combs' direction. Uh, no. No, n that can't be true. Rappers engaging in sex with underage people? Rappers engaged in promiscuous sexual activity and drug use? That No. I have been reliably informed that the values promoted by so-called rap culture are just as good and valuable as any other values. And that to point out that actually rap songs very often include glorification of this sort of behavior is in some way racist, even though this behavior would be equally disgusting and ludicrous performed by people of any race. But if you mention that, um, that rap very often glorifies precisely this sort of activity, you got a problem. Now, what'll be interesting to see is how P. Diddy or Diddy or uh, the, the names change frequently in this in this realm. It'll be interesting to see which of the allegations most damages him brand wise. So I don't think it'll be the drug use and I don't even think it's going to be the underage girls. I think it's going to be allegations by this guy that, that Diddy is bisexual. Jones alleges that Combs sexually harassed and assaulted him while he lived with him at Combs's homes in Florida, L.A. and New York, as well as on a yacht Combs rented in the U.S. Virgin Island. The harassment and assault and assault included, quote, Constant, unsolicited, and unauthorized groping and touching of his anus. I, mm, that seems not good. I feel like this kind of big news will be made into a movie. Oh wait, 50 Cent is already working on that. He says things, he doesn't even know what he's saying is like fruity. He says something fabulous and he goes, yo, no, but me and you, we ain't party. Like, we need to party. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> when it's people say that to me, I get a little uncomfortable. <laughs> like, when you see, you see Jay the kids put his head down like, <laughs> while we, we stuck here right now. And the cameras just roll, everybody see, don't make like it's just me, man. <laughs> what if you do some like, like a little fluffy stuff now going you guys on? Like he said, he said something to me one time, a long time ago. He told me to take me shopping. I looked at him like, what the f what the, what'd you just say? <laughs> Let me yeah. move, man, before I do something. You're gonna make me mess up the wet. Let's Let me go. get out of, no, did, did you take me test. Still what a guy oh, says to a girl. Yeah. Did you see that? Of course nah. I didn't see it. Nah, I didn't see it. You didn't see it? I swear to God. Uh, Come yeah. on, man, you saw that whole world, y'all. And on the gram. Check, check this out. When they started playing the game, the pause game, I would definitely. That came from Harlem, too, by yeah, the way. Yeah, came from Harlem. I definitely would say some, oh my, woo crowd would be like, whoa, did he just say that? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't play games, y'all know. You know what I'm saying? I'm a grown man. I don't play games. But, um, yeah. Did the you compilation, nah, I was, I was coming off of being in Miami at night of party, and I don't really remember what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Would you like a reminder? Yeah, sure. Play some. Play, play, hey, yo, play. listen. Yo, I, I love it all. I love it all, man. I like when you like this, Daddy. Yeah, yeah, where you put my bag? Daddy, yeah, I like when you, oh, when you right scrambling here, right and scraping for no, no, no. shit. That was you. Scrambling. <laughs> you said, you said, what? You said, I like when you do it like that, Daddy. <laughs> when you scrambling and scraping for shit. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> I don't know what I was talking about. Hey. Nah, nah, I mean, I was You don't go back no, and no. look at that stuff and laugh? 
I mean, it's, I mean, it, it could be funny. I don't really be on it like that. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. like. <laughs> I'm you sure know, we can put Charlemagne's compilation against Diddy's compilation. We have a bunch. We put Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, I also, I also don't do it because I know I'm, I know I'm bad at the game. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I know I say like reckless stuff out my mouth that's just not maybe you know adding up to with somebody who maybe somebody who's homophobic, but I'm not homophobic and I really don't you know care. You know what I'm saying? I just. But um, I'm bad at the game, and it's probably hilarious. I would love to see it. I would love to see the video compilation. It's hilarious. 50, yeah. 50 came up here, and he was giving you flack for the asking Fab the party. So you, he'll ask you, oh, he'll ask you to play it, play it, play the clip, man. Yeah, play the clip. Go ahead. Why won't you party with me for your birthday, man? I, I, we, we party for my birthday before. You came to my party. And, and... No, but me and you ain't never really party, you know what I'm saying? I asked 50 about that, and he said you did the same thing to him. You asked him to take him shopping. Yeah, I thought he needed some clothes. <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm a nice guy. Yo, what? I mean, why are you with him? Hey, yo. Why y'all got Hey, yo, I don't have no beef with, 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 with. I don't know why. With, with Fifth. He loves me. He loves me. Do y'all really can't have see a beef? It? I mean, y'all can't see it. No, we can't see it. Y'all can't man. see that he loves me. But see, you really, hold on. You really think that's hate? You really, when you really break it down, you've been out here a long time. You know he loves me. I don't think he like it. You know he loves me. I don't think he like it. Okay. But why? But why not? Y'all just y'all both passionate. Y'all both. I don't know. I, I, yo, check this out. I don't. I don't know. Like I don't. Both the same. No, we are not. Okay. We, we are not the same. <laughs> but I mean, we are not cut the way from the you same guys work and work hard. Yeah, and 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 um, you know, I mean, I respect that. I don't. I don't never hit him with no, you know, nothing. I don't even think of no other man, man. You think Diddy's in trouble? Nah, man's just chilling in Miami. He's in the clear and totally not getting it himself busted anytime soon. Oh, this this coming from the soul right now. It's f Friday. We out here, you know what I'm saying? Doing what we do, doing doing it first like we always did. I'm back outside. You know, Soldier Boy, I did everything first, nigga. So I, you know, I said your name. I know you ain't even going to, but hey, check it out. Yo, check this out. It's a, so much bad shit on the internet right now. So much like negative energy. So much just like, yo, everybody, let's lift up the frequency and vibration. Let's stay off this fucking internet. If you're seeing this, turn your phone off for a day. Get you some rest, get closer to God, get closer to your friends. You know what I'm saying? Be kind to people. You know what I'm saying? And um, think about what you're saying. Think about what you're doing. And get ready for 23 to rise because it's your season of, 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 of wealth, your season of happiness, your season of peace. God bless y'all. High profile officials are starting to get involved and in giving their own theories about the music mogul, including ex FBI agent Tracy Walder. Well, thank you for having me, Natasha. I actually am surprised um, that he he took this step, but he's not sorry. He's sorry he got caught. That's why he made this this step, in my opinion. Um, you know, he went so far as to pay the hotel to keep this video quiet. So I don't believe he's sorry. If he was sorry, this is something he would have admitted to right away. And as you mentioned before, this is something that he has vehemently denied in the past. Yeah, and, and Mark, LA's district attorney uh, has already said that Diddy will not be charged for this assault because of the statute of limitations. We actually spoke with Gloria Allred about this last night, who has represented other victims with allegations against Diddy. She believes charges could still stem from this video. I want to listen to that quickly together. Under the law to file a criminal charge for this type of misconduct, it's too late. Uh, but now that doesn't mean that somehow it might, if the federal government ends up filing, uh, you know, indicting and filing charges against Mr. Combs, it may be that, for example, if they file a RICO violation, that has a longer statute of limitations. Violation. Mark, what do you think of this, a RICO violation? Well, I think this is a, the, the uh, any criminal charge in state court and the, from the DA's office is the least of his concerns. As Tracy will tell you, I mean, he was hit by the FBI and Homeland Security. They're not there to investigate an assault that occurred in 2016. He's in a box that the feds have caught him in, and he's not going to get out of it, okay? I don't think he's going to get out of it. We're hearing all these rumors and all these lawsuits that are going on that specifically point to human trafficking, sex trafficking as well, where he benefited from. Benefited from. This is actually going to be evidence 
evidence that's going to bootstrap in and going to be able to show in a trial if there ever is one of the, uh, that show this is how he acts this is his modus operandi this is not a new crime that they're going to charge him with okay but it could be a predicate act and Ms. Alred was completely correct this could be a RICO charge against him my point is I think he's already in a box he's not going to climb out of they just haven't put the lid on it yet Mm. And Tracy, I saw you nodding there earlier. You know, I'm going to ask you about this, but I also think it's an interesting moment in time because Cassie Ventura's name was dragged through the mud last year when she first came forward with these allegations. Tell me a little bit more about the court of public opinion, first of all, turning in her favor. And then also, could this incident add anything to the FBI investigation into Diddy? Because it's now been almost two months since his homes were raided. Well, I wholeheartedly agree with what Mark said. And I also think, too, the charges from Homeland Security, any federal charges, in my opinion, because I feel this may be a RICO or, or trafficking charge that could come down, is going to take some time. I've worked RICO cases that have taken actually years to investigate. I'm not saying that that's what's going to happen here, but I don't think that this is something that's going to be handed down, an indictment that's going to be handed down very quickly. No. I, yeah. In terms of, oh, I'm sorry. No, in go terms ahead. Of, in terms of the court of public opinion, look, I think Diddy actually dragged the federal government, quite frankly, through the mud. Uh, when these search warrants were executed, he said that they used inappropriate force. In my opinion, this video right now gives them all the reason in the world. A video obtained exclusively by CNN on Friday that allegedly showed the 54-year-old rapper brutally beating Ventura in a hotel hallway in LA. New surveillance footage obtained exclusively by CNN appears to corroborate some of the allegations of of abuse against music mogul Sean Diddy Combs. The video captured on multiple cameras shows Combs wearing only a towel, assaulting his then girlfriend Cassie Ventura in a hallway at a Los Angeles hotel in March 2016. A lawsuit filed by Ventura in November last year and settled the next day referenced actions that seem to match those seen in this video. Other close friends and colleagues who have been beside Diddy for an extended amount of time have also come forward with allegations on their own. On May 21st, model Crystal McKinney filed her lawsuit against Sean Combs, Bad Boy Entertainment Holdings, Sean John Clothing LLC, and Universal Music Entertainment Group. And the statute says that it revives any claims against, quote, a party who commits, directs, enables, we'll talk about that, participates in or conspires in the commission of a crime of violence gen motivated by gender, has a cause of action against such party in any court of competent jurisdiction. Lane explains that when she was 17 years old back in 1998, McKinney won MTV's first model mission competition. She was given a modeling contract and her career started to take off with her appearing in all sorts of major magazines. And then in 2003, when she was 22 years old, McKinney says she was invited to attend a men's fashion week event being held in New York. Now, the person who invited McKinney is only referred to in the filing as the designer. But according to McKinney, quote, the designer told plaintiff that he would be introducing her to Combs, which could advance her modeling career. The designer began to direct plaintiff's appearance as he sought to ensure Combs found her attractive. The designer then handpicked a black leather coat with a fur hood, a translucent chiffon, beige V-cut shirt, fur-lined handbag and jewel-encrusted jeans for plaintiff to wear to the event. Due to the traumatic events to occur later, plaintiff saved the unwashed clothing from that night in her closet where they remain in a plastic wrap. Wow. Then he said he had the power to help her career, continued to be very flirtatious. He also allegedly kept plying her with alcohol. And at the end of the night or the end of the dinner, he allegedly told her he wants to get to know her better. McKinney says she accepted her first hit of marijuana, but now believes it was laced with some other narcotic. McKinney claims that Combs then led her to a bathroom where he allegedly forced her to perform oral sex on him, despite her saying no. Quote, upon standing and walking, plaintiff felt more and more woozy and then lost consciousness. Plaintiff awakened in shock to find herself in a taxi cab heading back to the designer's apartment. The lawsuit says that after the alleged assault, McKinney didn't get as much work in modeling or acting. Eventually, she couldn't get any work at all. Upon information of belief, Combs had plaintiff blackballed in the industry and utilized his significant influence to impede plaintiff's career growth. Plaintiff became severely depressed as she began to blame herself for the assault and for sabotaging her own career. The assault led plaintiff into a tailspin of anxiety and depression. In or about 2004, plaintiff attempted suicide and was hospitalized. 
McKinney also states that she was married from 2006 to 2010, but according to her, her relationship fell apart because she had a mental breakdown connected to this traumatic experience. And this all goes, by the way, to the harm element of a lawsuit. What did you suffer? What are you seeking? McKinney's lawyers state in the complaint, quote, as a direct and proximate result of the aforementioned crime of violence and gender motivated violence, plaintiff has sustained and will continue to sustain monetary damages, physical injury, pain and suffering, and serious psychological and emotional distress, entitling her to an award of compensatory and punitive damages, injunctive and declaratory relief, attorney's fees and costs, and other remedies as this court may deem appropriate. When she met Mr. Combs, Ms. Lampro shared with him her dreams of working in the fashion industry. And Mr. Combs promised to mentor her and help her by introducing her to music and fashion industry executives, as well as assisting her with finding work. Mr. Combs love bombed her. He showered her with gifts and flowers as evidenced by one of the cards that accompanied the flowers that Mr. Combs sent Ms. Lampros for Valentine's Day in 1994. A photo of the card from the New York florist, The Daily Blossom, says, Happy Valentine's Day, love Puffy. Mr. Combs went so far as to invite Miss Lampros to his first Father's Day celebration, and a picture of that invitation was included in this complaint as well. Now, from there, the complaint says that what started out as a love-bombing, flirty relationship quickly went south. This is according to Lampros. Quote, Upon information and belief, what Mr. Combs displayed as kind gestures quickly manifested into an aggressive, coercive, and abusive relationship based on sex. These acts were not isolated to the state of New York as Mr. Combs would fly Miss Lampros to Atlanta to see him, where they would spend time together. Miss Lampros would also fly to Miami to see Mr. Combs at his home. The filing includes two photos of Lampros purportedly at Combs' home in Florida. According to Ms. Lampros, Mr. Combs had a terrible temper and often threatened to harm her if she failed to do what he said, if he witnessed her talking to other men, or if she failed to take his phone calls. According to Ms. Lampros, she was also not allowed to talk about her relationship with Mr. Combs to anyone because he didn't want anyone to know he was seeing her because she is a white woman. Aubrey O'Day was another person who has worked closely with Diddy for a few years. She has been talking about how sketchy he was for years and has been consistent. I knew after my attorney looked into it and saw that we weren't really getting our publishing back from back when we actually sold as many records as we did, which would financially change all of our lives. And we did write on songs and so we would get a nice chunk of money. Mm. Um, I saw all the headlines about Diddy's being benevolent and giving all of his blessed artists their publishing back because it's, you know, notoriously known throughout time that he, he screws his artists over, mm -hmm. allegedly. So when that came to me and then my attorney confirmed, uh, it's not really him, it's Sony and now they own your catalog and now, um, they are giving you the rights to whatever it's made in this small period of time and in the streaming age when you have to stream something a million times to make a cent what good does that even do me right mm -hmm. and then um it came along with a silencer basically in so many words it came along with a very long drawn out you can never speak of all of these things and people ever again. And these people, these people, the people that they've ever worked with and anyone that they've ever worked with, who's worked with, who's worked with. Mm. I mean, it went on for generations. It basically would cover everyone in the music industry. Right. So I knew at that point, he's not being benevolent. He's covering his ass for something. And that's when I wrote my band and I told them, please do not sign this. Something bad is gonna happen. Or the only other thought I had was he's promoting an album. The thought that I didn't have at the time that I kind of have now is, was the album also an additional distraction? Mm. And from the looks of it, things are going to pile up so high, you're not good crack.